I'm Gabrielle Lichterman, founder of Hormonology and creator of the Hormone Horoscope apps. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you about uh, an email that I got this morning. So this talk is going to be a little bit on the fly uh, because it really, uh, it interested me. So I just wanted to like get to it right away because actually I get this kind of email all the time. So today's email came from Rebecca. And Rebecca asks, <laughs> Why can't every day of my cycle be like I am during ovulation? And that's when estrogen is peaking in our monthly cycle. And all that high and rising estrogen gives you a great mood. It um, boosts your energy. It revs your libido. It makes you really, you know, quick thinking. I mean, it really makes you just on point. You are just at your peak for many women. Some women, you know, suffer a little bit of anxiety due to that high estrogen. But for other women who really enjoy it, who love that revved feeling, um, I get a lot of <laughs> I get a lot of readers asking, "Well, how can I get that all cycle long? Is there a pill? Um, do they make an over-the-counter hormone that I can just you know rub on that you know I'm going to be like high estrogen all cycle long?" Well, unfortunately, the short answer is no. There is no quick way to stay in that high estrogen state. In fact, it's kind of dangerous. It's not, it would not be a good idea to um, start taking a lot of estrogen um, to keep that hormonal high. There are other um, unsafe ways to mimic that um, experience, but um, we're not going to go into those because I don't, I don't recommend those either. But there are ways that you can enjoy your cycle. There are ways that you can have that uh, high everything and um, have it all cycle long. But I'll, I'll, and, and, and there's another way to enjoy your cycle too and appreciate your cycle. So this, this is kind of like a two-parter answer. So the first part is, um, okay, yeah, during your week two, high estrogen is really revving everything. And that's because it, um, estrogen alone doesn't do it. What estrogen does is it triggers, um, it triggers a domino effect. It triggers, um, it tells other things in your body and brain to do these things. It tells your um, brain chemicals to uh, churn out more dopamine, more serotonin, more uh, noradrenaline, more things that uh, boost your mood and rev your energy. So your estrogen is telling your body and brain to create certain changes. Now, um, the more estrogen your your um, body creates, the more uh, of this of these changes you experience. Now, during your week two, the week leading up to an, and including ovulation, high estrogen does this automatically for you. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like automatically having caffeine infused into your system. Um, you don't do anything; it's just happening to you. Now, that's the key thing. In your week two, it happens automatically without you doing anything. But that doesn't mean you can't have these high feelings other weeks of your cycle. The, the truth of the matter is you just don't have estrogen at your back pushing you along. So it takes more effort. It takes more of an action on your part to make these high experiences happen, this high energy, this high mood, this high libido. Um, even though you have lower levels of estrogen or estrogen is on the decline, estrogen really is only just one factor that impacts these, your brain and body, these brain chemicals and all these other processes that go on in your body. It's just one, one way to do it, but there's many, many ways. <laughs> and that's the great news because um, when you don't have estrogen high and rising automatically doing it, there are other ways to get that high mood, that high energy, that high libido. And some of those ways are uh, drinking caffeine, um, going uh, for a run, you know, being active, um, exercise, especially um, aerobic exercise to get your heart pumping, uh, triggers a flood of feel good endorphins that uh, makes you feel good and obviously, because they're feel-good endorphins, <laughs> that, that boost mood and boost energy. And 
um, regular exercise actually also helps with libido and uh, researchers believe it's because it improves circulation and uh, better blood, blood circulation improves libido. Um, so uh, if you want to improve libido other ways, uh, caffeine has been shown to improve libido in women. It's preliminary research, but it's worth exploring. Um, I've noticed that when I'm not drinking caffeine regularly, if I have a hit of caffeine, it does have that um, libido enhancing effect. Um, and then, of course, you can um, tr trigger your libido other ways by uh, reading a saucy novel or watching a, uh, a certain type of movie. Um, <laughs> so there are ways, think, actions that you can take to rev your mood, rev your energy, rev your libido. Get those things that you love in your week, too, but in other times in your cycle. It just takes a little bit more effort on your part. So um, don't think that you can't enjoy these revved effects, even sharpening your memory. So you want to sharpen memory in your week three when um, rising progesterone has a tendency to make you a bit foggy. That's because it's a sedating hormone. Um, drinking orange juice, drinking dark cocoa or eating dark cocoa, and um, mild to moderate intensity exercise, aerobic exercise, have all been shown to improve brain function, to improve memory and thinking, and that's because all of those in, improve um, the amount of blood that goes to your, um, to your brain. Actually, that's just one, that's just one mechanism of action. There's other mechanisms of action, but, um, so there, what I'm trying to point out is there are ways that you can enhance things that you love about your week two in other weeks of your cycle. It just takes a little bit more effort. I've had some of my happiest days in my premenstrual phase, in the final six days of my cycle when estrogen is plunging. Now, of course, this is known as the time when your mood is, you know, is is more prone to being on the negative side of your emotional spectrum. But that's not a given. That just means you have a greater tendency toward that. Um, you can boost your mood many ways, despite your estrogen dropping. Again, just because your estrogen dropping estrogen is dropping, it doesn't mean you can't have a good mood. You can boost your mood many other ways. Uh, again, we're, we're talking about exercise a lot, I know, but um, exercise really is proven to um, rev positivity. Um, but of course, there's also dark cocoa that, that also, um, coincidentally enough, in addition to sharpening brain skills and boosting energy, it also boosts your mood. Um, I tend to drink dark cocoa every single day. You have to remember, I'm a health journalist, so I've read the research. I know it's actually healthy for you. I know it sounds really indulgent, but there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, I just slammed a cup of dark cocoa before starting this video, and you can tell that it's really enhanced my week two energy. <laughs> I don't know if you if you couldn't tell that my you know my energy was kind of spiking. I don't know if that was coming across in my incredibly fast speech that I am trying to slow down, but it's not really working because you know. High estrogen week two, <laughs> plus dark cocoa. In any case, so I've had some of my best days during my premenstrual week because I worked at it. Um, I did something that um, brings me joy. For instance, I'm um, I, I, when I really want to boost my mood, I go out with my camera and I take photos. It's one of the things that I just love doing. It's a personal, um, personally fulfilling activity. Um, so that brings me great joy. And I know that if I do it. At any point in my cycle, it's going to boost my mood. So you have to think about what it is you love about your week two, about your ovulatory phase when estrogen is, is high and rising. What is it you love? And then seek out ways to spur that same effect in other weeks of your cycle. It's really doable. It just takes a little bit more effort. Now, the second part of my talk, um, or my answer to Rebecca's question about how can I you know, enjoy this um, uh, this high estrogen phase all cycle long. The second part of my answer is what I really would love you to do is to learn to appreciate each phase of your cycle. Um, it's great to be up here and high and, you know, talking really fast and um, getting a flood of rewarding brain chemicals whenever you do anything fun. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, there's a season for everything, right? Um, so during the slower parts of your cycle, these are great times to appreciate slower activities that you love. For instance, during my week three, week four, second 
half of my cycle, which um, starts the day after ovulation and spans through the day before your next period, I love to read. I love to take long drives. I like to do things that are slow and in keeping with that mellow, um, the mellow hormonal effects. Um, because I know that during my week two and, you know, the second half of my week one, uh, week one starts with the first day of your period and spans seven days, um, I know that rising estrogen is going to make me too, you know, upbeat. It's going to make me too fast. It's going to make me too antsy. I don't want to do slow things then. I can't appreciate them. I can't, appre I can't sit and just read a book um, when I'm like this. I mean, could you imagine me trying to, <laughs> trying to read right now? It wouldn't happen. I wouldn't enjoy it as much as when my you know, my uh, body and brain are slowed down during the second half of my cycle. So what I'd really love for you to do um, is instead of pursuing a cycle that's all week two, try to look for ways to enjoy and appreciate each week of your cycle, each phase of your cycle, your week one, which is your period week, your week two, of course, um, which is high in rising estrogen, but also your week three, when um, progesterone dominates and it's slowing you down, and even your week four when progesterone and estrogen are descending. During that premenstrual phase, this is a really good time to really treat yourself well without the guilt. You know, um, grab the remote <laughs> and have, demand total control over the TV. <laughs> Um, treat yourself to something special, whether that's a walk in the park or um, maybe, you know, a, a type of tea or food that is a little special for you. Um, treat yourself well without the guilt um, or do other things that match that, that cycle phase. And hopefully um, if you can match activities for each cycle phase and you can appreciate the personality of each cycle phase, then maybe you won't feel the need to recreate your week two all cycle long. But again, if you do, there are ways that you can recreate energy, mood, libido. You just have to work a little bit harder at it because you don't have the hormonal winds at your back just automatically pushing you along. So the, that's my uh, hormonology tip for today. I'm gonna keep it kind of short and sweet. I think I just like raced through this very high estrogen <laughs> plus cocoa uh, made me uh, speed through this. So um, if you have any questions, please ask me in the comments below or email me at gabrielle at myhormonology.com. You can learn more about me and what I do at my website, myhormonology.com. I offer free eBooks, they're really short guides. And um, there's a whole collection of them, and I love these. I know I keep telling you about these free ebooks, but they're really just short guides, like 10 page guides. And um, they give you great overviews of your cycle, they show you how to sync your life with your cycle, and they give you, um, they allow you to show other women and men and teens how their hormones impact them throughout their cycle. It's a great introduction. So if you have a friend or a loved one, who, or, or student or client who you think could benefit from learning hormones and their moods, health and behavior all cycle long. These eBooks are a great starting point. They're totally free. You just, you know, you just pick the ones that you want at myhormonology.com. I have a, a on the menu a learn section and it's right under the learn section, free eBook library. And um, you just, you just pick the ones you want and they're emailed to you. If you don't get them via email, it's only because your, uh, your, your uh, email client blocked it. So just email me at gabrielle at myhormonology.com. I'll be happy to send it to you directly. I really want this information out there. I really want to share it and I want to help you share it too. So these eBooks really make it easy to do that. All right, thanks so much for watching and until the next time.